one. DJ holds the bulb in place while the world revolves around him. All of them. One DJ needs to look up and say, hey, there's a light bulb out up there. Then they need to go get a fresh light bulb and a ladder, climb up the ladder with light bulb in hand, unscrew the old light bulb, take it out, throw it in the garbage, and then screw the new light bulb in so there's light, while all the other DJs in the world stand around saying, I could do that. Welcome to part three. Today I want to talk about asking questions. Now what I'm not going to do in this video is to get into real specifics like how to ask the question or how to word the question. All I'm going to do in this video is suggest to you some types of questions you may want to think about asking your clients. This is going to be geared more toward the wedding client, but you can really use it for any client you want. Just alter it and make it your own because that's what it's all about. Uh, some of you may have your own lines of questioning that you like to ask your clients. And if you'd like to share them with us, please do. We've got a comment section and a video response section right below this video. I'd love to see them, and I'm sure a lot of other people out there would love to see them too. Let's all learn from each other. Now, why ask questions? Well, there are two reasons that I can think of. And one's really obvious. You want to find out what your clients' wants and needs are. But one that may not be so obvious to some of you is we also want to establish credibility with our clients. Now what is credibility? Credibility in a nutshell is trustworthiness and expertise. By the time you're done asking the questions of your client, you want to establish with them that you are the expert and they can trust you. You have their best interest at heart, you want them to have a great event and you want it tailored to their wants and needs. So if you can establish credibility through a line of questioning, what you've done is you've taken the focus off of you and put it on the client, which a lot of clients are going to find refreshing. There are a lot of DJs out there who like to talk about themselves when they consult or when they sell. And you know what? Sometimes that's what the client wants. Sometimes the client wants to hear what an awesome performance you do. There's a guy who works for uh, the agency that I work for. He's a nut job. This guy, he's a bodybuilder, big black guy. And he'll go out to a gig and he'll sing and he'll put on Tina Turner wigs and uh, he'll do the Louis Armstrong impersonations. He's got a robot suit where he does Mr. Roboto. He is definitely the center of attention at his parties. And the clients that hire him want a DJ to be the center of attention. But that's not my style. That doesn't make his style better than mine or my style better than his. It's just different DJs, which uh, brings me, I guess, to my next little talking point, which is no matter how good you are, no matter how good of a DJ you are, no matter how good you can sell, the fact of the matter is not every client out there is going to think that you're the best fit for them. And that's okay. That's why there are so many different DJs out there. We all have our own style. If we were all the same, it wouldn't matter. You pick a duck. But uh, I guess the objective here with these videos is to make sure that we're not all the same. It's to make sure that we all definitely put our own personality and spin into not only our sales presentation, but our performance. Now a question like, what is your name, is kind of silly to cover, but uh, I want to take it a little further. I think it's not only important to know that you're talking to Bob and Sally, but you need to know how Bob spells his name. Does he prefer Robert or Bob? Uh, Sally, same thing, how you spell in your name. Also, last names. What is your last name? How do you spell it? And uh, how do you say it? That's a big one. I did an Arabic wedding last night. And believe me, phonetically spelling the names saved my life because uh, they did not look anything like they sounded. Uh, very important to know how to say the names. Also, it's important to know what their married names are going to be. Sometimes they hyphenate. They take both names and they hyphenate the names. Sometimes the bride does not take the groom's last name. That's the very traditional thing to do. But some women just don't like that tradition. They want to keep their last name. and There's not a thing wrong with that. But you need to know it. 
You don't want to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Bob and Sally Smith when Sally has kept her last name as Johansson and has found that offensive. So you definitely want to know what the married name is going to be. As DJs, we assume a lot. Uh, one thing that I assume a lot, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, is that when a client books us, we assume they want to have a dance, meaning people on the dance floor. We assume that they want us to get everyone out there involved at one point or another throughout the evening and uh, show everybody a good time. But uh, believe it or not, this isn't always what the objective is. Sometimes they want something a little more personalized to the bride and groom that doesn't necessarily include the rest of their guests. I had a wedding like that this summer. The groom gave me about a three hour playlist. I really only ended up with about two and a half hours to play. Nothing on his playlist was anything that I could really pump up a crowd with. Uh, no matter how I arranged it, I just didn't see how to do it. So I went off the playlist for a second and actually filled his dance floor up. It didn't take long. They were dance hungry. They wanted to come out and have a good time. But the groom didn't like that. He came up to me and he said, look, buddy, you need to stick to that playlist. That's what her and I want to hear. I don't care about these guys. We want to hear our songs, period. That's it. So I stuck to the playlist. I did exactly what he wanted me to do. He wrote me my check, so he got what he wanted. Now, if I would have known this beforehand, I probably would have turned the gig down because I don't want my name on this kind of stuff. But it was through the agency, and yeah, the agency work has its ups and downs. That would be a downside of agency work. But uh, we shouldn't always assume. We need to know what the objective is. I'm going to talk a little bit about my gig last night. Half of my guests were Arabic. Now, I found this out real late in the game. Uh, again, agency work has its ups and downs. But uh, luckily, one of the uncles brought me some Arabic CDs that I played, and the guests loved it. I was even able to beat mix it. It was real good stuff. But uh, I didn't find this out until real late in the game. If I would have found out earlier in the game, then I would have been able to talk to some of my buddies who are Arabic DJs and gotten some music off of them and uh, surprise the crowd. Now, keep in mind, I said about half of the guests were Arabic. Her whole side was Arabic. So we're going to say out of 150 people, 75 of them were Arabic. The groom gave me very specific instructions not to play any Arabic music until quarter after 11. What the groom did was he alienated half of his guests until 45 minutes until close. Come on. If I would have had the opportunity to talk to the groom in a proper consult in the hall about this party, I could have talked some sense into him. First thing I could have done, what we talked about earlier, I could have established some credibility with the client, and then I could have held his hand and coached him a little bit on maybe a better way to handle this. Now having said that, the Arabs about killed him by 10 o'clock, so Arabic music went on at 10 sharp, and I was very happy to do it. I tried to suggest it to him earlier in the game, but he didn't want to listen to me. He thought he knew better, and uh, hey, he's paying me, what can I really say? But again, I didn't have a chance to talk with this guy and establish credibility so I could help coach him through the evening. Now, speaking of who's going to be at the party, it's a good idea to know where your guests are from. Not only is this going to help you out with maybe some of the ethnic music you might want or regional music, but it's also going to be a good cue that the bride and groom may want to spend some time walking around individually to each table to at least say hello to all of these people who have maybe flown in from all over the world to join them for their special day. Maybe they'll meet a relative they never met before. But, uh, you know, perhaps time needs to be allocated for that. So it's good to know where are the guests from. If they're all local, ah, heck with them. Let's just start the party. All right. Stay tuned for part four. What I want to do in part four is take a lot of your questions, suggestions in this video, in the comments and video responses, uh, and talk about them in part four. Some highlights, if you will. So until then, practice and enjoy.